Okay, hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. Episode one of many. Yay. I forget we counted how many chapters there were, or well, not by hand, but I found <laughs> online. And it was something in the 300s. Good. Yeah, the first Plenty book, I think, is like 17, 18, somewhere in there. Yeah, content. <laughs> Everything is content. Hashtag critical role. Um, are you ready to go for the first episode? I guess so. We yeah. should introduce who we are. Oh, yeah. Who, who are, are you? you? <laughs> I don't know. So starting off deep. I don't know who, who I am. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> I am Professor Lynette from a Wizard PhD. Or Jeffrey. Also from Wizard PhD. Kinda, guest, yeah. guest starring. <laughs> now, now more so with the podcast, yeah? Yeah. Wizards PhD. Wiz- uh, I don't know, but like the flow Wizards as well, PhD. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all right. What are you? Uh, what are you up to today? We just recorded the intro. Well, we did the setup. We mm-hmm. did everything. Uh, hung out with Winnie, who is very sad to not be on the podcast. At some I point, think. I'm sure he'll jump around and. We'll have to lift him up. <laughs> There's no room on this like table for him. Yeah, no, he <laughs> takes up too much space. The table's not that big. Got the, got the cool screen behind us. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited that we have access to a library that lets us try out equipment. Cause yeah, very cool. I don't know. There's a oh, lot of stuff that you can do. Check it out like every week. That's fine, but like I, do you I have don't, to take it back to him. I do have to take it uh, back. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> we'll get used to assembling it faster. Yeah. Now that we have the setup. Mm-hmm. So one's ready. One's ready. All right. So everyone should turn to page one. <laughs> the boy who lived. <laughs> get your book. Yeah. Get and today's book. lesson is called Secrets, Secrets. Secrets, Secrets. Interesting. Yeah. The first chapter is called The Boy Who Lived, though. It is called The Boy Who Lived. So this is a lesson from that chapter. Mm. Uh, should I read a synopsis yeah, of the chapter? You I wrote it, so you know I can take the critique if it's too right. long. I haven't heard it yet, so miss some good point. Maybe I'll live comment it. Just kidding. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make faces, emoji faces. Uh, the chapter starts following Mr. Dursley, a brutish, ordinary man, as he goes about his typical work day that's mixed with some strange happenings like a map reading cat. Uh, At lunch, he overhears a part of a conversation about someone called Harry Potter, which is the same name as his nephew, who he and his wife pretend does not exist along with his parents. But alongside his kind of normal day gone sour uh, is a celebration by some secret community, secret magical community. A very unusual man named Albus Dumbledore eventually arrives outside the Dursley's house and confirms for Professor Professor McGonagall, who has uh, morphed out of her cat form, spoiler alert, <laughs> that the dangerous and powerful Voldemort had been defeated. Uh, he had killed Harry Potter's parents, yet somehow failed to kill the infant child and was even destroyed by the very attempt, somewhat mysteriously. Dumbledore then reveals that baby Harry is to come and stay at the Dursley's home, much to the chagrin of Professor McGonagall, and he is to be kept from learning his famous identity until he is older. Mm -hmm. I didn't write this, but eventually Hagrid shows up with the baby. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) So what did you think? What do you think about the first chapter on this reread? I mean, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Cause, well, it's like I I can kind of picture things, and um, I don't know. It's it's like a funny setup to the whole thing because you're just like, I don't know. This guy seems really weird. What's his Vernon. deal? Yeah, yeah, Uncle Vernon. <laughs> like, what a paranoid person. Well, yeah. Why? I don't know. You know, it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I think like. The very beginning of the chapter, I love. I'm probably going to be very complimentary of J.K. Rowling's writing (laughs) as we go along this podcast because I think she's phenomenal. But I think immediately to set it all up with a secret, that this is a secret. Mm -hmm. The whole community is a secret, and this is a microcosm of it because the Dursleys 
there's this quote, the Dursleys had everything they wanted, the Sun page one, I think. Mm-hmm. But they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. Mm-hmm. And that's my favorite quote for the, for the chapter. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also like, so like the magical world is kind of also, there's the, the tone is set of, it's very quirky. You have like, I don't know, Dumbledore and McGonagall exchanges are <laughs> just like, you kind of get that, oh, this is what they're like. Mm-hmm. And I mean, them specifically as characters, but also like, just everything about the world is kind of like, mm-hmm. it pops in and out and I don't know. It's awkward. It's quirky. It's mm-hmm. kind of funny and goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think Dursley knocks over the wizard red and he's just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> you should celebrate too, <laughs> muggle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. What do you think about this idea of uh, the fear of somebody discovering the secret that the Dursleys are keeping. You mean in general, like yeah. the fear of dis- well, yeah. or for them specifically? Both, I guess. I mean, I think that it's somewhat relatable, maybe. Like you have a secret, like that's why it's a secret. You don't want people to find out. Right. Um, but with them, it seems like it kind of, it becomes an obsession and it like <laughs> funnily, like, like takes control of their life. It's like everything is, you know, you're looking over your shoulder, you're like questioning any not normal thing that you mm-hmm. see. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I think that would be annoying and stressful and probably probably feeds into itself and like comes into this vicious cycle of like, I don't know, it just makes it worse over time. Yeah, it's so bad for them that he, Vernon, is even hesitant to just bring up their existence to Petunia. Yeah, the yeah. only other person who's in on the secret, he won't even bring it up to her. Mm-hmm. That's a deep secret. Mm-hmm. That's a big fear. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's also complicated because you have the the secret or part of the secret is a, an actual living human that lives mm-hmm. with you. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, well, eventually. At this point, she doesn't live oh, there. Yeah. right. But it's a... Uh, the end of the chapter yeah (laughs) yeah what else what else do you have well so a big part of the conversation with Dumbledore and McGonagall is kind of like what do we do with Harry Mm -hmm. and so there's this whole conversation about like readiness so like leaving Harry with his aunt and uncle until he's ready to Mm -hmm know who he really is and what you know his i don't know just who he is and what's going on another secret another secret Mm -hmm. and so i don't know like that any sort of conversation about readiness kind of sets me off because being in education it's kind of like yeah that's everything are you ready for this uh, ready preparing for standardized tests and like everything is so when you read it with that lens, it's very, very tarnished with fear. So like the idea of readiness is kind of like, well, I'm afraid that if you're not ready, that bad things are gonna happen rather than let's just deal with life <laughs> as right. it comes to us. Right. And so a big question that I have is, is readiness something that can be achieved or is it just this rhetorical thing that kind of st- delays mm-hmm. for, I don't know, the benefit of certain people. Yep. Which yep. I, I already know what and I think. And childhood, <laughs> adolescence is so tied up in this with keeping secrets from children. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, like for the most part, we've talked about this so much because we're in education. Uh, the people keeping the secrets are actually just fooling themselves. Like kids know about everything. Yes. They did before the internet, they definitely do now. <laughs> Because we grew up before kind of being on the internet as yeah. kids and like I knew everything there was to know. Yeah. It's not like anything was really a secret. Okay, I've learned some things and I've had different experiences, but it wasn't like, yeah. oh, I didn't know like the world was like that. Yeah. I mean, I think when I try to um, rationalize or make sense of like, why, why is this a thing that exists and persists? And I feel like a large piece of it is 
comfort for the adults. So like for the adults to feel like, oh, we are, we're doing good. I think that people generally want to do good mm -hmm. and feel like they are doing good. And so like, that's why things persist and get taken up and then continue. And so because we have this cycle of like, oh, we have this readiness idea even, then it's kind of like, I don't know, we believe it, even though we don't believe it, but it's not really questioned on a large scale. I don't know. It's just really, really complicated. And I think we run into like, and we'll get into it in future chapters, that Harry himself kind of suspects some things, like some weird things happen to him. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's totally unfamiliar. Now we do also kind of get a, it's fictionalized, so he doesn't, the secret is kept from him. Mm -hmm. And so Dumbledore's justification, whatever we might think of it, uh, at least the goal of keeping it secret was kept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, th I think logically, so going in the specific context, we have an infant child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so logically, it makes sense to be like, okay, is it really? Because I guess like the exchange is like, well, it's, it's just ridiculous. Okay, yeah. so you have an infant child <laughs> who like basically defeated one of the most powerful dark wizards of all time somehow. Right. Nobody right. knows how. Right. And so he's like instantly famous, instantly an icon, instantly like something in the wizarding world. And so Dumbledore is like, okay, this is this is an infant. Like this is going to be like your entire life. Like we have to we have to like delay it at least. Like let, let him develop first without having all the crazy of our society just like in his face. I understand that. But like also when you bring it back to the idea of readiness, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Harry's like literally the only person who will ever experience this probably. <laughs> like there's no like blueprint for how to know that you're ready to deal with fame, how you're ready to know how to, it, I mean, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing to go off of. Which makes it even more complicated because basically you're kind of going off of like, you think that something bad will happen because probably because it's unknown because it's never happened before. Right, right. So I guess I can kind of understand that, but it sure. also is kind of wild. Yeah, it's completely rationalizable, the decision. I mean, we see how fast, because Professor McGonagall's first reaction is my gut reaction, which is like, you can't, you can't leave him here. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't leave anyone here. Even their own child doesn't really get a very great this child. That it doesn't loving. seem right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, maybe it's because of how much fear they live under, or whatever this fear that somebody will find out about wizards and their connection to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, she turns around very quick. Yeah. Dumbledore is basically just like, well, think about how famous he'll be, like famous before you can walk and talk. Right, right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I guess the question just in general is like, okay, so who decides if we're going to, if we're going to keep perpetuating this like readiness stuff, like who decides? And I've been thinking a lot about, I don't know, life <laughs> in general. <laughs> and something that I've been thinking about is the idea of like new experiences, because like, Okay, so you're in your 30s, I'm like approaching 30, mm -hmm. but like there are things that we haven't experienced, like we still have new experiences, even yeah. though we've been alive for 30 years. Right. So it's not the same of like, okay, being a, a, a kid and like, I don't know, having your first um, betrayal or mm -hmm. like, it's mm -hmm. like we've had experiences, we kind of have like interactions with people where I think it's We've had enough interactions where we'd be like, oh, I gel with you or like, oh, you remind me of like, we can these buy kinds of people, we can buy. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there's still new experiences. And I think about our parents, our parents like still have new experiences. Like they haven't gone through retirement before. Like, yeah. so like I've been thinking about like the course of a life of like, yes, like there is this kind of narrative and expectation that you 
give more credence to people who have lived longer or have more experience. But basically, if you think about it, a lot of us just like we just constantly have new experiences. It might not be like the frequency of them. Like when you're younger, you're going to have so many new experiences mm-hmm. like all the time. And that's why like adolescence is so first stressful. Time I ate a pretzel. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like all of these weird social things. And you're like, I've never experienced this before. And then it's like every day of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of like, I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about that and like, I don't know. It's just easier to fall into these like societal expectations of like, okay, older people or like lawmakers make laws because they know what's best for us or whatever it is that it, that in terms of like how we govern ourselves and each other. Right. There's one other secret that I was thinking we could start on and it's very related to the game. In fact, which is, Here's another quote uh-huh. uh, from McGonagall. A fine thing it would be if on the very day you know who seems to have disappeared at last, the muggles found out about us all, which is the statute of secrecy mm-hmm. and the separation here between muggles and magical kind. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? About the statute of secrecy? Yeah, now that you're on the task force protecting it. Abolish it. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave the charge. No, I understand because like historically, I understand where it comes from. It comes from conflict. Uh, So Salem witch trials, like burning, like literally conflict. And it comes from that. And the response from the magical community was like, okay, let's hide ourselves, Mm -hmm. which is not necessarily the thing that I would do, but like I didn't live during that time. So like, you know, it, it probably was the best decision at the time in terms of survival of of you know magical people Mm -hmm. whatsoever like you can't just have this constant war and like or like being hunted down basically um but it's interesting because so like the statute of secrecy was established in i believe 1707 and it doesn't seem like it's been changed since Mm -hmm. then so like when i think about that over the course of time this is why like with the game i've been so obsessed with thinking about technology internet like the connectedness of it because it's something that definitely is a threat to the statute of secrecy whatsoever. So like, are you going to adapt? Are you going to abolish it? Are you just going to live with it and just constantly obliviate people all day? Like what is your existence? We had a conversation. It might've been even on a live stream, but it might've just been uh, the two of us talking about like, can we imagine a very clever muggle discovering the existence of magic and then basically, uh, destroying the statute of secrecy using the internet and social media like mm-hmm. they they would have they don't even under arthur weasley is probably one of the most connected to muggle technology and he doesn't understand like mm-hmm. anything about the things muggles use so he he can't he doesn't understand the internet i would love to have like a conspiracy youtube channel be part of this game of like people muggles being like there's magic in the world <laughs> like shane dawson yeah <laughs> And yeah. just have like the whole like Harry Potter series. Yeah, <laughs> just out. yeah. conspiracy theory. I would like that too. Uh, yeah, that was all I had. I mean, I think, uh-huh. I think another idea here besides the conflict is, and it comes up later. We have the benefit of having read the books already, so mm-hmm. we can like have this you know, foresight yeah. of like, uh, non non magical problems. Do they have magical solutions? So mm, mm-hmm. muggles calling on wizards to solve their problems. <laughs> Maybe that's an interesting <laughs> example, yeah, of sort of. Well, know. it's interesting because like regardless of like um, the the social stuff, like socially muggles do not seem to fraternize with magical people. Like both groups literally have to physically exist in the same world, mm-hmm. you know? So like, it's not like, we just happen to not impact each other based on what we do. Like it's all interconnected. So that would be, for me, would be one argument against the statute of secrecy. Although it does, I don't know. I feel like, well, at least in the Fantastic Beasts series that the the muggle government at least is aware or talks to magical government officials. Am I wrong Mm. on that? I feel like- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was that made me think that like Macusa, person like 
at least like had some sort of connection with or like the prime minister eventually we find that out yeah but in the in the series and so maybe the statute of secrecy can still exist but then it just like the leaders can like i don't know coordinate or Mm -hmm. something i don't know i'm not i don't i'm not as familiar enough with that to know if it works she is so good at it because she immediately introduces us to a magical problem voldemort Mm -hmm. it's a magical problem Mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like there's any evidence that non-magical people would be able to tackle that problem. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't be able to, you know, defeat Voldemort. Mm-hmm. Well, but, so, so the nice thing about like all of these secrets is that it definitely sets up that there's a mystery, right? So like mm. the big thing is like some McGonagall is like, how, like he's murdered so many people, like he's done all this stuff. How could he like not take down a little boy, like a mm-hmm. baby? Mm-hmm. Like that's literally what she yeah. says. And it's kind of like this mystery of you're like, wow, like what, who is, who is this person? Like who is Harry Potter? So that's what I really like about the setup of this chapter. Yeah. Can I tell you my favorite quote? Yeah. Okay. It was on page 12. We can only guess, said Dumbledore. We may never know. (laughs) I liked it because I feel like that's kind of how I think about the world. It's Mm -hmm. like. We can talk and we can theorize and speculate, but like ultimately when it comes to like a lot of things that we try to pick apart, there are some things that we might not ever know and that's okay. And that's kind of like- We just we dealt just, with one you know, earlier in this episode, which is whether Dumbledore is making the right decision. Keeping, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, we can only guess whether yeah. it's good or not. Yeah. And, and like you said, it. it's never going to happen again. <laughs> no. So even if it did, it would be different. You know, right, so right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the benefit of hindsight is actually usually not even that good of a benefit. You look back and say, oh, this didn't work, but it's not like you know whether it's better or worse than the other circumstances in the multiverse. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not absolute. It makes yeah. kind of like, I don't know, when you study history and you're like, oh, so we don't make the same mistakes, it makes it right. much more complicated. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Okay, do something different, but yeah. you don't know what the ramifications Can of that Can we ever is. do anything different? Yeah. Yeah. I, hmm. Oh. History is a circle. We're going to have to cover history at some point. (laughs) Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Let us know in the comments uh, what you think, what suggestions you have. We'll probably already have recorded other episodes before we actually post this one, but eventually we'll be able to, you know, take suggestions if you're reading along with us. You know, what do you think we should talk about? We can do book summaries, etc. Lots of ideas. Yeah. So feel free to let us know. Or if you have your own favorite quote, put it in there. Good idea. Yeah. It's almost like she runs a YouTube channel. <laughs> your own favorite quote? I was going to say like something about secrets, but I was like, no, I'm not going to like ask people to <laughs> share what is their your secret? deepest secret. First episode. Thank no, you. No, no. no, please don't share that. No, so I don't, don't want, want that to know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Juan's ready? Juan's ready.